Today on the podcast, we have the founder of Macroverse. I know it sounds similar to Metaverse, but they aren't the same, are they? Could no, you- not at all. <laughs> <laughs> tell us more about this yes no thank you so much for having me on um you know we i guess i should give you a little bit of kind of my history and some of that stuff right because it it's a bit of a it took a bit of a of a of a, a journey to get here where we are now um essentially i've been in traditional film and television for 25 years uh working on sets mostly so as an assistant director uh on i mean the biggest movie i've done was the original transformers um the last couple of years i've done the shows dave and barry um and golly future man all sorts of fun stuff like a lot of great mostly comedy which has been wonderful um but always on set always making stuff for mostly for other people um and i met my very good friend and business partner evan matthews golly 20 years or so ago now and he had a background in traditional design and illustration and he'd love you know thought he was going to be a comic book artist growing up and we had this realization that we were both on these paths of kind of making stuff for other people and doing a very good job of it but we both really wanted to make stuff for ourselves and so you know we started writing scripts and doing that kind of thing and we got some traction and we got a couple of things optioned which was great and we sold the thing and you know we got some kind of movement but it was it, you know it very hard still having to juggle kind of our careers around that yeah. and then a few years ago we had the opportunity to do a comic series for do you know the movie the boondock saints have you ever seen the boondock saints yeah yeah, yeah. great like really fun late 90s action yeah. flick right so there was a lull as they were getting ready to do the second movie and yeah. we pitched troy duffy the the creator of the show hey why don't we do a comic series it's perfect there's a huge fan base for this thing there's other bits of this story that we can tell in this way let's let's do it yeah. and so we did a traditional published book uh kind of bridging the gap between the first two movies well between the two movies i should say and um it was great like convention circuits and norman we had norman readers and sean patrick flannery and troy there doing like at the booths with us and signings and all this super super fun and realized that the kind of traditional comics industry was very broken and was very hard to deal with for a a kind of independent publisher and so you know for looking at our own work felt like all right we know we love comics we know we can do we know we we've seen this side of the business and we feel we can kind of do better than that why don't we do a digital comics kind of thing and really invented this macroverse this tap story format that we have now for mobile as a way of making comics feel kind of organic and, and inherent to the mobile experience um, and tell stories in kind of an interesting new way as, at the same time. Um, and so that was what led us to, to Macroverse and producing our own content initially. And then we've now got kind of a hundred creators that we're working with hundreds of episodes of content up there. We're releasing new stuff all the time. Like we're really, you know, kind of built this thing up and are, and are really excited about it. Okay, so you deal with a lot of comics? Almost exclusively comics on the app at this stage. Um, But we have, you know, I think what's interesting with us is we've produced a ton of new media, lots of animation, lots of audio podcasts, lots of audio series. Our third co-founder is a guy called Ricky Riccovina who comes from the gaming side of the world. So, like, he started the mobile gaming division at Disney and then branched out on his own. So there's, you know, we've... We're starting with comics because we it's a we love the medium and we feel it's a great way of kind of testing ideas and finding out what works and getting our own material out in front of people yeah. in this format that we love. And then obviously with hopefully with the goal of great, we've got a series of working, let's do an animated series on this, let's do an audio series based in this world, let's build this thing up and and take them out into the world. Okay. So the comic world is very popular, even in film, with um, the powerhouses Marvel and DC Comics. Yep. You find the field is very competitive, and how 
would you tell a person getting into comics now how they could uh, try to break through or get noticed since there was a lot of competition and fans are more related to things that you grew up watching, like Super right. and Batman and so on. And all that fun stuff. Yeah, no, I think absolutely. Like it's, you know, it's Marvel, obviously Marvel especially. DC have been struggling. It'll be interesting to see what happens with game James Gunn at the helm now. Um, although it has to be said, The Flash looks great. I'm kind of excited for The Flash. Um, but, and, you know, honestly, Marvel has been floundering a bit with their last couple of, re of releases, but I thought Guardians was really good. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens at DC over the next few years. Yeah. Um you know, it's funny, right? Because you do associate, you think comics and you think, yeah, Marvel DC. But there are so many other series that have been made, you know, so many other series on television, especially so many other movies that are not remotely related to, to Marvel or DC that are doing incredibly well. I mean, one of my absolute favorite shows on the on the on right now and, uh, you know, new series coming soon is um, uh, uh, The Boys is just a you know, incredible TV show. Now, it is very much in that superhero world, but it's, you know, looking at it through a very dark lens, of course. Um, Invincible is another one, is an animated show that I love. I mean, they're both from Point Grey, which is great, from, from Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Um, but you kind of look at more and more content really across the board, and there's so much of it is now being inspired by comics which i think is really exciting um and i think it does speak to your point you know your to, you know your question about how do you break in what are you doing i think fundamentally it's it still comes down to story right it still comes down to what is the story i'm telling who are the characters in this story that make it compelling reading yeah. and viewing and i think you know that you know especially with the, the lots of conversations around AI, you know, there's this Writers Guild strike that's happening in LA at the moment, the Directors Guild, which I'm a part of, look like we're gearing up to do the same kind of thing. Um, Screen Actors Guild, which my wife is a member of, like they're gearing up. So I think there's a huge, you know, legitimate concern around streaming and around uh, creation of, of material, um, especially with the advent of AI. But I don't think AI will get that, spark and that character that people can that people can bring their humanity and their experiences to this character into this world and so i think first and foremost it's about you know creating a great story and in comics especially it's if i'm a you know writer writer artist great i can do it all myself if i'm not well then if i'm a writer and i've got a great story then it's about recruiting the great artist and that hopefully you can collaborate hopefully that's not that's not prohibitively expensive you know people obviously need to need to be compensated but then you know we certainly are taking submissions all the time from people to for, for new material webtoons is obviously an incredible outlet i mean they have hundreds of millions of page views a month on webtoons um and so distribution is is the distribution aspect is very much handled but it's it's absolutely tricky to get to get noticed in this field, um, and so I think for me it's certainly you know advice would be around getting getting your getting your series getting your story onto kind of as many platforms as possible, putting you know putting things out consistently is a huge part of it, like building an audience that knows great every Thursday I can tune in here and I get this new episode of this thing and that's what they can do. And they, you know, I think, um, and there's, it's, it's definitely, there's no kind of magic bullet. I think the web three of it all can get interesting at the same time. Um, but I think that you're still the, the question of exposure and attention is something that you struggle with kind of until you don't, <laughs> right. You take off and then you blow up. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think it's, it comes down to a lot of it. It's it's a great story and spreading as wide a net as possible to get people looking at it. So you just mentioned Web3. Could you tell us what that is for people who don't know? Yes. So Web3 really revolves around blockchain, right? So it's the kind of blockchain technology. And for people that aren't familiar with that, yeah, there's a lot of, obviously, there's a lot of negative connotations with that right now because of these various kind of cryptocurrency blow ups and, you know, a lot of very high profile bankruptcies, 
a lot of scams in the space. I think, in you know, inevitably with new technologies, you end up with with uh, a lot of people who want to do something interesting, and you end up with a lot of people who feel like, hey, I can make money quickly and easily and take advantage of people, which is, I think, very sadly, just human nature. Um, but so blockchain technology is simply, it's an immutable online ledger. It's simply a record of this transaction with this thing happened at this time. And then this transaction with this thing happened at this time. And this transaction with this person happened at this time. And, and so it is just this way of building up something that everyone can look at. It verifies when something started, where it was initiated, who initiated it, and what its kind of proceeding events are, um, which on some level is very kind of boring, you know, boring and tedious. But what it does do is, in the creative world especially, is really establish ownership of an idea. So it's like, great, if you can come in and you can release a comic series involving, you know, you know multiple ways of doing it. We just released a short, like a two-page comic just uh, just a couple of weeks ago, working with another project. And we, yeah, we put it out, we minted it, we put it out in the blockchain. Um, people, Some people picked it up, totally free mint, like people picked it up and it was great. But what that does is then establish just immutably, me, Adam, wrote this thing in this universe with this character, with this artist attached. And so if anything then happens with that character ongoingly, if you've, you know, if I've accidentally or intentionally written Boba Fett, well, great, I now can prove that I own Boba Fett in this universe. So if this now goes and becomes something huge, well, great, I can retain a piece of that. I know what I'm doing. This is my character. This is my story that I own. And so if other people want to kind of build on that or if that takes on a life of its own, that can benefit me hugely as a creator in a way that I just kind of wrote something and someone else took it and it's out in the world and I can't really prove it and I don't really know. You know, it's it's becomes a way of protecting creators, I think, to a significant degree. Okay, so with that new technology with the Web3, you, you, you said earlier that content creators could now put out a product and let people see it that they weren't able before. Has this been a conflict with the traditional way of doing <laughs> business? Like, is there like heads knocking because it's so out there now, saturated? Yes. No, it's a great look. It's a great. It's a great question. I think you. It's there's always. I think whenever there is kind of a seismic shift within an industry, you get, you get, uh, a you get bad actors, but b you get a lot of resistance from the from the entrenched industry, right? It was like when streaming started happening with the music industry. Yeah, Napster was doing something illegal, but those people looking forward, like people in the early days of the internet, could look forward and say. Oh wait, music is getting away. Just like the record, just like the A track, and then the record, and now the DV, the CD. Music is going to get away from that stuff. Streaming is the future. How do we? Yeah, right now it's the wild west, and no one knows what's going on, and there are lawsuits, and there are da 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 da, and people are being taken advantage of. But streaming is clearly the future, right? Same thing happened with the film industry. It was like great. It was live television, and then it was. You know, then it was you know, TV with movies, and then it was VHS, and then it was DVDs, and then Netflix comes along, and yeah, they had the DVD rental by mail business, but that they was... called themselves Netflix from the start. They were like, "All right, eventually the web is going to catch up with streaming, and we want to be the primary player in that thing, right?" And there were a ton of, you know, obviously Blockbuster. You know, oh, I mean, it's very sad, but you know, Blockbuster and all those places. They yeah. fought tooth and nail not to get in, you know, about about changing business models. Um, comics is very much the same. They hugely resisted digital. And I think there is a cohort. And, and for us, it's very much we're not about eliminating the physical thing. We don't want to get rid of that. There's a beauty in having a physical book that is this this item that sits on your shelf and you can read and there's something like I love that side of things still. Yeah, and it's, it's, the it's, challenges of the print market mean digital distribution is much easier, you know? Yeah. Even in the music industry, like, let's say, an artist like Drake, he has a lot of streams, but then some people say it's not the same as the artists from the 80s where people had to go to the store and actually buy the physical product because now it's at people's fingertip on their phone. 
Yep. Uh, it's a different thing. Some people want the, the physical, as you said. Yeah. It's still, it's funny. It's like, I'm a huge Metallica fan, right? They just released a new album recently. And, you know, every album, every track on that album is up for free on YouTube if I want to watch that. I could you know, go into Spotify and do that. But for myself, like there are only a handful of bands I'll do this with. But no, I went and I paid and I got the high res, like the high def digital files. Like I bought that for 20 bucks. I did just download it, but then I have my player with the right speaker system so I can get the high def music experience for this band. Um, but it was very, yeah, it's very interesting, right? It's been a total shift of it's, you know, I think I think you know, I was talking to my 15 year old son and he was super excited about the new Spider-Man, uh, the Spider-Verse soundtrack that just came out, right? Fantastic soundtrack. But as he was like, you know, I want to listen to this whole thing. And I asked him, well, when an artist that you like releases a new album, do you listen to the whole thing or do you just find... He goes, no, I listen to the three or four songs that I like and I move on. Whereas for me, it was always like, no, I, you know, and I think for those of us in a slightly older generation, it, was, it is that enjoyment of, great, there are 12 tracks in this album. I'm going to listen to all of them. I'm going to listen to this whole thing four or five times. And then I'm going to hone in on these four songs that I love. But you have that experience of kind of this a more immersive experience and I think a more sticky experience doing it that way. Um, and so for us, you know, with the comics, we are, we're still trying to be very focused in how we release things. It's like, no, we want people to enjoy this thing that we either produce or create, but we want to meet them. We want to meet the audience where they are. Right. So it's like, great. If you want a mobile experience, fantastic. Here's what that is. If you want this kind of high end digital collectible experience that, that web3 enables and the benefits and the fun some of the fun we can do with that great we've got that if you want to go to your bookshop and and read it as a graphic novel great we're gonna we've got that too like we're starting you know we're in print production on some things we're starting conversations with some bigger publishers for like libraries and that kind of thing so it's it's it for us it's not about any one medium to the exclusion of the others it's simply how can you get your how can you hopefully get things that people love into their hands yeah. as widely as possible? You know, give people the choice. Exactly. Exactly. And if you hate web three and you think NFTs are a scam and you think CRISPR is a scam, great. There's an app, which is totally web two and there's a book. So great. Don't, don't do that. Other people are like, yeah, I love web three and I love the collectible aspect of this. And I think digital items are the future. And, I personally feel that they are, and I think there's huge applications of blockchain technology in in gaming, in literature, in movies, in music, and all these things. Ticketing, God knows, ticketing. But I'm I'm a convert to that way of thinking about things. It doesn't mean that there aren't scams. It doesn't mean there aren't terrible people in the space. But fundamentally, the same thing happens online, yes. and yet you wouldn't necessarily condemn the whole of the internet because there are some terrible people doing terrible things on that. You know. Yeah. So speaking of technology changing way industries do things, um, there's a lot of concern over artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. As uh, the the godfather of AI, he recently left Google, and he's warning about the dangers ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've seen the effect already on artists, where artists are having their like dead artists are having their lyrics done on other songs that they didn't even participate in but it sounds exactly like the artist right a different person's verse do you yeah. what do you what do you think ai's impact is going to be is it going to be like something that is completely different that we've ever seen before that we don't know the where the positives and negatives will lead us to? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, it's obviously very much front and center of a lot of, I think, especially in the artistic space, it's front and center. I think I, I, my, you know, I, I, I tend to oscillate between kind of the future is the Terminator world, right? Like we're going to be fighting for our survival against the machines in a climate ridden world. And it's going to be it's just everything is terrible. Again, so then that you know, people that say that actually. Oh yeah, and I think I was in a meeting with uh, Brian Rose from London Real in the UK. Yeah, that was the topic. Just yeah, it was yesterday actually. 
And that was the time he had the different, like the top AI people given their perspectives on things. Oh, wow. And, and that was an opinion from, from some of these people. Yeah. yeah that's that was the, because they were saying the, there's super artificial intelligence and then there's general artificial intelligence. So okay. they're saying how chat GTP, the way that it's um, learned in just in the last few months, they're saying it's kind of scary because they didn't expect it to be reached this fast. So one right. thing learned its own language. One of the A's, one of the and the programmer said that they'd never put that into the program for it to do that. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that's where the concerns are because they're saying they're not actually telling the public the full right. why there's dangers. The whole. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. You know, it's look. I think there are the kind of there are there are legitimate global concerns about the rise of you know technology in general, the impact on media and the impact on truth. People's people's concept of truth has been so warped over the last ten years, anyway. Um, and I think you know, social media does you know has a big part to play right. in that. Um, this, I think, is another step in that direction, which is terrifying. I mean, you know, before, as it were, God knows, I remember seeing some kind of infuriating and utterly stupid things. It was like, oh, you know, someone took a, a three different speeches from Obama and they cut them together where he was, oh. you know, saying, as it were, oh, well, we at the UN are going to kill everybody and the blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, no, you cut away. It's oh, so yeah. clearly stupid, right? But... So oh. any idiot could see this, but this was still circulating in certain circles that this was, oh, you see Obama speaking to the you know devil cult, whatever, right? Fine. But now you don't even have to cut away. You could get a deep fake of him, ma- mimic his voice using AI, and suddenly you have something that looks like him saying, yes, I want to kill the children and drink their blood. And people who are inclined to believe that's what he thinks are going to say, you see, he said this. And yeah. people who, are, and conversely, people who despise Donald Trump and whatever are going to, you know, you can do a deep fake of Donald Trump saying, yeah, oh, I was best buddies with Jeffrey Epstein and we did, well. like, it it can totally destroy people's concept of truth. And I think that is the, that is one of the terrifying aspects of this, yes. Mm. Um, and then, they, you know, much, much less globally impactful, but still hugely harmful to people across the world you know especially in an artistic industry like the film industry and the you know the the yeah. all the writing the comments we do it's like you know the writers guild right now is terrified that you know there'll be executives who'll be able to sit there and say all right we're going to buy this script from this person we then feed this great script into a ai machine that'll spit out nine more scripts in this style and we'll, you know, we'll so we'll pay a writer, we'll pay a handful of, we'll pay a writer for the script, we'll pay a handful of writers to come up with a story arc for the season. Then we fire them all. We just plug these stories into this machine. It spits out ten scripts, and we keep paying the one showrunner, the one creator, who then rewrites these scripts to make them for his voice. That yeah. eliminates, you know, that takes what would be four months, five months of work for ten writers. That eliminates that, takes that down to. Two weeks. They're gig players, and then one person, maybe two people, get to stay on for the duration. Like that's really, really scary. And it's, you know, it's it's not that far off to. There is a world in which that could happen quite easily, you know. Um, and uh, and and yeah, that's that should concern people. The same thing is happening with art, and like you're saying, musicians, people are getting their 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 styles mimicked. And there, it's not you know it's it's fringing on copyright, but it's not quite. Yeah. It, it's and it. That's, a, the it's, art, that's what one of the artists said. Um, the copyright over your voice. There's no actual legal thing for that. So that's why right now it's like as you said before, um, the wild wild west. That's what yeah. it is with it. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see how that turns out. We'll see how that turns out. Hopefully, not in kind of world-ending cataclysm. Yeah. <laughs> As we thought before, there's also the the plus side to it that if it's used properly, it's a good source 
for for content creators. Yes. That's and that's the thing I think it does, you know, I and you're 100% you're right. It, it's it is it is coming. Like it's not even coming. It's here to some degree, right? So I what we've started talking to people about and certainly we've seen in our own experiments as writers ourselves if we're kicking around ideas for a new a new series or a new show or a new project or whatever we'll actually do this thing where we'll feed it in the chat gpt we'll feed the concept in it'll spit out oh great a two three paragraph thing right generally speaking what the the two or three paragraphs it spits out are the single mo it is the most obvious literal boring possible interpretation of this idea right so what we then do is look at this and be like okay this is what we're not doing thank you get rid of that this is what we're not doing any of these threads that we had thought we were going to take we're not going to do that because now we can figure out something that is different and interesting and new hopefully as opposed to here's this kind of rote repetition of this thing i certainly know artists who are using you know, using uh, Mid Journey and some of these things. Again, it's like, great, I need inspiration for this piece. I am still going to work with it, but I need this. I need to be able to, I want to be able to brainstorm and I don't, I can do it more quickly as opposed to me taking a day of sketching. Well, I can plug some stuff into here and it's giving me 20 different options on this. And, oh, I love this, 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 this elements. And now let me take that and go over here. You know, I think if I was a concept artist now, I'd be a little scared. Um, you know, I, it's funny. We were just going through this in a project and it was, I still, if I'm looking for inspiration, I still like going through the big, you know, deviant art and the big kind of art websites or the whatever yeah. stock footage, because I like that kind of interaction. I like seeing what other people are thinking. So I'm looking for an alien planet with luminous this, blah, 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 right? Let's say. Yeah. I like just looking at, 50 different artists' interpretations of what that is and being like, okay, I kind of like this. I see this. Okay, this kind of, this is cool. This is really cool. Oh, well, that gives me an idea that I could do this. Like, I like that pool, but I certainly know people now who are, I kind of want some ideas for an alien world that's, has, you know, glowing, luminous, floaty things. Yeah. They'll plug that into mid journey. They'll get 20 options. And it's like, great. Yeah, this is my concept art for this thing. So I think it's, you know, it, it's become a tool. And I think there will be a swathe of people that get negatively impacted by it. Yeah. And there will be people who will kind of learn how to use it to do more and enhance what they're doing, you know? Wow. Um, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't suck for the people that get hammered. <laughs> yeah. It's you know? Positive, negative. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh, I hope. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, we're not heading toward heading towards kind of yeah, Terminator esque yeah. hellscape. Um, but you know, um, it's always good to keep that in the back of the yeah. mind. What's right? It's always good to keep that in the back of the mind. The possibility <laughs> that it's yeah, it, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, I think it is, and I think that's. I mean, you know, there's this movie coming out this summer, Oppenheimer, about you know about the person who kind of invented the nuclear bomb, right? It's a Chris Nolan movie, and it looks. I will go and see anything Chris Nolan does, but I think there is this inclination among mankind to, oh, there's this new shiny thing. Let's kind of play with it and kick it and see what happens without really thinking through what that could become. You know, yeah. and I think that's, uh, I think it's, the, you know, it's very much in the nature of man. It's led to a lot of incredible invention and amazing the world we live in, right? But it's also the world we live in for better and worse. So how can people contact you about the Macroverse? Um, great. Thank you so much. It's we've, so we are, um, macroverse.com is our website that's live right now. That's got our first kind of big release of comics on it um, that's coming up. Yeah. Uh, we're all over socials at Macroverse HQ. So Twitter, um, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and then if any of your listeners are interested, uh, we also actually are doing kind of a free, because our app, our you know, regular Web2 app is a subscription app, yeah. um, but we're doing a, an offer. If anyone is interested, they can go to macroverse.world slash free month. And there is a free month of, uh, you know, free month sign up, no, no strings attached, sign up, get a free month, read a ton of stuff that's on there. There's a lot of great content. Um, 
explore and enjoy and you want to stick around and keep going great but if not then uh no i'd love to love the more the merrier on there so yeah macroverse.world slash free month um will yeah. get your listeners a, a bunch of free stuff okay and then for content creators uh do you look for certain type of certification or you judge it off creativity totally judge it off creativity no and that's you know if people want to reach out reaching out to us kind of on instagram on twitter like we're on those a lot so we keep our eyes open we're if anyone is listening and they have a comic that they have in mind or something or there's something they're in production on something they're looking for distribution something to just an idea they want some feedback on right you know it's it's yeah. we are very very um we're happy to take submissions from anybody and we've certainly you know we're working with people all over the world so we've got you know artist team in nigeria that we're working with um artists in asia and china in korea in india um I'm obviously all over the us here where i am in panama and south america and brazil so you know we're and it's we're very very much looking for kind of as broad a range and a diverse a range of creators as possible because we just we want those new and interesting takes on on stories we're looking for that very very actively so yeah if you have a story to tell reach out to us on any of the any of the platforms we're on and and we'd love to chat okay so any lasting words for our viewers um for me it's always like i think it is there are a lot of there's a there's I think there are a ton of people out there who want to be creative in some way and have aspirations to be creative and, yeah. you know, come and join us. Our discord is another great place to come. It's macro, you know, discord.gg slash macroverse, but we are constantly making stuff with new people and constantly, you know, new writers, new artists. We're always talking to new people. We're always making things. So if anyone has, you know, aspirations or desires or even just interest in in making things in any which way yeah come come play because it's actually as scary as some of this ai stuff is it's also a great time to be a creator um and that you know the creative the creative economy as it is kind of churning is is a very exciting place to be playing yeah 